Welcome to today's videos where we're going to talk about the, uh, the physiology of bilirubin. Uh, so as you know that the, the lifespan of the red blood cell it's about 120 days so let us assume that this is the erythrocyte which is also known as the red blood cell and we are saying that the lifespan of this it's about 120 days so what actually happens that once the red blood cell reach its lifespan it's going to die off and it will be phagocytosed or eaten up by the uh, by the macrophage that are found in the spleen so let us just draw the spleen it is not anatomically how the spleen is but just for learning purpose so inside the spleen we have um, we have the macrophage okay inside the spleen so this is the spleen and inside the spleen we have the macrophage and the function of this macrophage which are found in the spleen it is to actually phagocytose the worn out red blood cell that is the function of the macrophage so we are saying that this macrophage it has the red blood cell it has phagocytosed the red blood cell so this macrophage it is going to degrade this it's going to degrade digest and catabolize the red blood cell inside the spleen and this uh, red blood cell it is going to release um, a component which we are calling as the hemoglobin the hemoglobin so what will actually happen to the hemoglobin so this hemoglobin it is going to be further be degraded it will further be catabolized it will further be broken down so this hemoglobin it will be, be it will be broken down as well into to be broken down into globin and him to be broken down into globin and him so the globin it will further be broken down into what we are calling as the amino acid and these amino acids are going to be used by the body cells they are going to enter the circulation and go to the to the bone marrow for reuse again in the formation of other erythrocytes okay the globin it will go it will enter the circulation and go to the bone marrow and reused again for the formation of the erythrocyte on the other hand this him it will actually be broken down it will further be broken down so let us just bring the him outside we assume that this him which is inside the spleen so this is the him which is this one so we are saying that this him it is going to be further be degraded okay or it will further be broken down into molecule so it will be broken down into what we are calling as ion and bilavidin okay to be broken down into bilavidin and ion so the enzyme that is going to degrade this heme it is what we are calling that enzyme it is what we are calling as the heme oxygenase so this enzyme it is the one that is going to break down this heme into this beloved ion so this ion it will also go to the bone marrow it will be uh, it will go it will enter the circulation and go to the bone marrow to be reused again uh, in formation of what in formation of the red blood cell so this is what is going to happen this is going to go to the bone marrow on the other hand this bilavidin this bilavidin it will further again be degraded or be broken down into what we are calling as the unconjugated into the unconjugated B 
Billy Lupin. Into unconjugated bilirubin. So the enzyme that is going to break the or the enzyme that is going to break down this bilavidin, it is what we are calling as the bilavidin bilavidin reductase. So it is actually this enzyme that is going to degrade this bilavidin to change into the unconjugated bilirubin. So once we have the unconjugated bilirubin, this unconjugated bilirubin, it is actually fat soluble and it is very toxic and very dangerous to the human being. So this unconjugated bilirubin, it has to get rid of the body, but in its form where it is fat soluble, it cannot be excreted. Okay, it has to be converted into a water soluble. So this unconjugated bilirubin, once it is not excreted or it is not changed, it can go to the brain and cause a condition which we are calling as the kenicteras. Therefore, we have the liver. Okay, so we have the liver. So the liver, you know that the liver makes about 10, the liver makes about 10 to 12 grams of uh, per deciliter of proteins in a day so in the circulation okay so that's about the liver so let us assume that this is the circulation right this is the circulation so once the unconjugated bilirubin has been formed the spleen is going to release this unconjugated bilirubin inside the circulation okay it's going to release the unconjugated bilirubin inside the circulation. So we're going to abbreviate it as the UCB, UCB, which means unconjugated bilirubin. It is inside the circulation. So we, are, we have said that this uncon, unconjugated bilirubin, it is fat soluble. And because it is fat soluble, it cannot be excreted. Don't forget this refers to the circulation it cannot be excreted it has to be changed into a water soluble so this unconjugated bilirubin it is going to bind to a protein which we are calling as the albumin okay the unconjugated bilirubin is going to bind to a protein known as the albumin okay it will bind to a protein known as the albumin for it to be transported to the liver. Okay, so it once it binds to this albumin, then the unconjugated bilirubin it is going to reach the liver. So let's say it is actually being taken out in the liver in the hepatocyte cells. So this is the unconjugated uh, unconjugated bilirubin. So this unconjugated bilirubin inside the liver, uh, this is the liver, this unconjugated bilirubin inside the liver, it is going to be converted into conjugated bilirubin, okay? So the unconjugated bilirubin, it is going to be converted into what we are calling as conju gated bilirubin and this conjugated bilirubin it is water soluble and this conjugated bilirubin it can now be excreted out from the body okay and what actually happens that for this unconjugated bilirubin to be for, to be converted into conjugated bilirubin there is addition of an acid by the enzyme known as the glucuronic transferase enzyme. The glucuronic transferase enzyme, it is going to add glucuronic acid to this unconjugated bilirubin. Okay, so here we are saying that there will be addition. So let us just bring it here. There will be addition, which is a plus of the 
the glucuronic there will be addition of glucuronic acid for this unconjugated bilirubin to change into conjugated bilirubin and this whole process of transformation it is what we are calling as conjugation okay the process of transforming of the unconjugated bilirubin into conjugated bilirubin it is what we are calling as see, conju conjugation so now since now this bilirubin has been converted into water soluble what actually happens is that uh, the liver it has got some duct or some passages eh? so these are what you are calling as the hepatic duct of the liver this hepatic duct we are going to have the cystic duct here where we have the gallbladder we have the common bowel, uh, common uh, bowel duct all right then of course we're going to have the the pancreatic duct and this is the duodenum which is like this So we are saying that this whole thing it is the pancreas hope you can remember all these are pancreatic duct so this common bowel duct it's going to join with the pancreatic duct okay and we say that this is the duodenum which is the small intestine so what happens that this conjugated bilirubin it is actually green okay so we are since we are using the blue marker so we are saying that this is the conjugated bilirubin where it is actually others are going to be stored into the gallbladder so what happens is that when someone an individual takes a meal which is actually rich in fat it is going to stimulate the gallbladder to actually secrete to secrete the bowel and the function of the bowel is you know that it is to emesify fat the function of the bowel is to emesify fat so what will happen is that once the conjugated bilirubin it is inside the small intestine which is the duodenum we abbreviate the conjugated bilirubin as CB so this is the conjugated bilirubin so I'm going to lab here try and rub So what will happen is that this is the small intestine and you know that the small intestine of course we're going to have the colon we'll have the colon sejum this is the colon in the colon of course we're going to have the rectum and the anus like that so you know that inside this colon the colon has some normal floras Okay, in the intestine we have some normal floras. And what is the function of the normal flora? It's to protect the colon. Okay, so inside here we have the normal flora. So this conjugated bilirubin, when it reaches the colon, so this is the colon, guys. When it enters the colon, it is conjugated bilirubin. Once it enters the colon, it is going to be catabolized by the uh, the normal flora that are found in the colon to change into what we are go what we are what we will be calling as stecocobilinogen as well as the urobilinogen. Okay, it will change into urobilinogen as well as steco stecocobilinogen so the normal flora that are found inside the colon they are going to convert this conjugated bilirubin in, into stecocobilinogen as well as the urobilinogen 
so this urobilinogen it is going to be excreted in feces in form of what we are calling as stecocobilin okay steco stecocobilin it will be excreted in feces in form of stecocobilin that is going to give the feces that color that you see then the urobilinogen about 10 to 15 percent are actually going to be reabsorbed by the circulation again back others are going to go so this is the circulation of, we have said that about 10 to 15 percent they are going to be reabsorbed by the circulation and the others are actually going to go back to the liver by the process and once the urobilinogen gets back to the liver we are going to call it as the enterohepatic circulation enterohepatic circulation well the on the other hand the urobilinogen so we are saying that it's the urobilinogen the urobilinogen is going to enter back so the urobilinogen others going to go to the liver while on the other hand the others are actually going to the to go to the kidney so we are saying that this is the kidney and once it goes to the kidney it is going to the the urobilinogen is going to be excreted in urine in form of uro uh, ulo, okay it will be excreted in the feces in form of euro is that uh, this urobilinogen when it goes to the kidney it is actually going to be excreted in urine it's actually pass out in urine that is going to give the urine that color that you see excreted in urine in form of urobilin okay so this was about bilirubin metabolism and catabolism so the first thing is that what you have to remember just a quick recap is that um the lifespan of the red blood cell, the normal red, the, the normal lifespan of the red blood cell, it's about 120 days. And if the red blood cell becomes uh, dead, they are going to be engulfed by the macrophage that are found in the spleen. The function of the macrophage that are found in the spleen as well as in the bone, it is to digest or phagocytose to the worn out red blood cell. And if they phagocytose those red blood cell, the, the macrophage, they are going to degrade the red blood cell. And the red blood cell, it is going to release a component known as the hemoglobin. And once the hemoglobin has been released, this hemoglobin, it, is, it will further be degraded or catabolized as well to form him and globin. Once these two have been formed, the globin, it is actually going to be formed, it is actually going to transform into amino acid, which are actually going to be used to help in the formation of other red blood cells. On the other hand, the heme, we said, the heme, which is actually going to be degraded or catabolized into bilavidine and ion. And of course, you know that the ion is going to go back to the bone marrow to be used as well in the formation of other erythrocyte. And the bilavidine, we said that the bilavidine, it will be acted upon by the enzyme known as uh, bilavidine uh, reductase to form unconjugated bilirubin. And the unconjugated bilirubin, we said it is fat soluble meaning it cannot even be excreted and this fat soluble it is very toxic and yellow and yellow in appearance and it can go to the brain and stain the brain and result in a condition known as the kenicteras so the liver produces some proteins about 10 to 12 grams in a day of proteins and 
This unconjugated bilirubin, it binds to a protein known as the albumin or albumin. And this albumin, it is the one that is going to carry the unconjugated bilirubin to the liver. And once the unconjugated bilirubin, it is in the liver, the unconjugated bilirubin, it is going to be transformed or it's going to be converted into conjugated bilirubin by the glucuronic transferase enzyme. What to happen? What is going to happen for it to change into conjugated bilirubin? There will be addition of the glucuronic acid. There will be addition of glucuronic acid to the unconjugated bilirubin for it to change into conjugated bilirubin. And that process, it is the one which we are calling as the conjugation. And thereafter, if it becomes into conjugated bilirubin, it is now water soluble. And it will be excreted, of course, in the intestine, in the colon. The conjugated bilirubin, it's going to be acted upon by the normal flora, and it's going to convert into urobilinogen as well as the stercocobilinogen. And the stercocobilinogen, it is the one that it will be excreted in feces in form of stercobilin, which is going to give the feces that color. And the urobilinogen, it is going to be it is going to enter back again into the circulation and some are going to go to the liver which we are calling as the enterohepatic circulation while the others are actually going to go to the kidney and be excreted in form of urobilin. So that was about bilirubin metabolism. Please subscribe to this channel if you are new by clicking on the red subscription button so that you can receive notification whenever I post my new videos. You can also like my Facebook page, which is Raymond Friday Moore. Thank you so much for watching.